Hello and uh, welcome to uh, Turkey Talks. Uh, today uh, we are going to talk about the recent uh, developments in uh, Balkans, especially in Kosovo, in Macedonia. Also, we can talk about uh, what's happening in Bosnia. Uh, I am joined by uh, two colleagues uh, from London, Daud Doti. Welcome to the show. Thank you. And Dilek, uh, you are from Skopje. Uh, Dilek Kutuk, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, Thank you, my friend. Let's start with uh, recent uh, developments in Serbia. There was uh, in Kosovo, actually. Uh, after 20 years, uh, the tension rose again uh, between Kosovo Albanians and Serbians. Uh, and right now, it seems that it has been contained for uh, now. But uh, we know that uh, this uh, situation between uh, in, uh, in the region between Albanians and Serbians. Uh, Mr. Doughty, maybe we can uh, start with you. Uh, what is the reason of this recent uh, escalation? Uh, and do you think it will uh, pop up again or uh, it can be contained for now? Well, the reason is old, actually, you know, it's, it, it, it goes back to centuries, but uh, um, why it escalated last week was because of the agreements that are not uh, are not going according to the plan and uh, um, be because, more, to be more precise, is because of the uh, uh, agreement between Kosovo and Serbia on the, on the border. Um, the, the problem was that uh, all the time that the, the, the talks or negotiations between uh, both parties started probably 11 years ago and they did not really prosper that much. You know, that wasn't all the agreements that were achieved. None of them were respected uh, uh, by the Serbian side. So the, the Kosovans uh, um, tried, you know, to implement uh, uh, all agreements, but uh, it, that doesn't really make any success if the other if the other side does not do it. So the, the latest one, it was only a few days ago and it was uh, um, because of how the both parties call of re reciprocity. So if the Serbia has if, if, if Serbia has imposed something on Kosovo, then Kosovan government wants to do the same on the on the Serbian side. So more precisely, it's about the number plates, car number plates, uh, um, and the documents of of Kosovo. Kosovan government wants to um, tell the Serbs who live in, in Kosovo that they all should. Uh, have Kosovo documents and they should register their cars in Kosovo because so far they haven't changed the old registrations because they refuse to recognize the authority of, of Kosovo. So uh, it, it became so tense that when, whenever the situation becomes tense, then the Serbs intervene and they block their roads on, on the uh, in, in, in the parts of Kosovo, uh, specifically in, in Northern Park. So they did the same few days ago. And the um, Kosovo government wanted to intervene, but again, you had the international side, uh, you know, uh, more precisely United States of America, the ambassador in Pristina intervened and uh, um, achieved sort of a agreement with the Kosovo government that the agreement has to postpone for, for a month. So uh, the, the both parties now have to gather together in, in, in Brussels on 18th of August and uh, we don't really know uh, precisely what is going to happen in the in the in the talks there, but we have some indications that both parts will be speaking on 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 a very hot topic, which is the association of uh, municipalities of sub municipalities in in Kosovo. So um, uh, for the time being, it's uh, it's quite calm, you know. But uh, the situation could between the Serbs and Albanians could escalate at any minute. Uh, Dilek, you are in uh, Skopje, uh, and we know yes. that there is strong uh, and a big population of Albanians there. And whenever something happens in Kosovo, uh, it has uh, reflected to neighboring countries because uh, there are Albanians in uh, Macedonia, in Albania itself, uh, also in Montenegro. So uh, how did you feel uh, this latest escalation in Macedonia and what was the reaction? of the uh, Albanians in, in Macedonia? 
Actually, I didn't feel this because, uh, you know, in Macedonia, uh, there, there is another problem, like, uh, which called French proposal right now, and the Macedonia tried to change its constitution to start negotiation process. So I didn't feel that uh, the, here's Albanian uh, really focus on the, the problems in Kosovo, because here is Albanian, um, if I checked the population of North Macedonia, it's uh, like uh, uh, more than uh, two million people living in Macedonia, and Macedonians make up uh, uh, around uh, 60 percent, uh, and Albanian at uh, 25 percent. So uh, here is Albanian is really focused on the European path because they want to be a member of the European Union. Because if you uh, see the Macedonians here, they can get the Bulgarian passport and they can, um, let's say, um, can be uh, somehow uh, a member of European Union. But Albanian really wants to join the European Union, so they really don't focus on uh, Kosovo issues actually right now. Uh, you mentioned uh, EU, uh, and we know that uh, in the Balkans uh, for the last 20 years, European Union's uh, Eastern uh, European policy uh, has uh, an impact on uh, controlling the tension uh, between uh, different ethnic groups. But this recent uh, incident showed us any time uh, these uh, problems can come back, uh, you know, sometimes in Bosnia, sometimes in Macedonia, sometimes in Kosovo. Uh, what is the reason for that? Uh, though uh, maybe uh, the source of the problem uh, cannot, has not been addressed so far. Uh, do you agree with that? What is the... I do, uh, I do agree, yes. So I do agree completely because of the international uh, uh, community or uh, European Union, which is uh, much more involved uh, or directly involved in talks between uh, uh, Serbia and Kosovo, and it is heavily involved in, in all parts of the Balkans by by trying to, to bring uh, uh, or keep the situation calm. Um, but uh, in, in the case of Albanians and, 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 and Serbs, hasn't really, uh, we haven't seen any deep involvement, uh, and there is always this fear that uh, Serbian side is being a, a sort of uh, favored by by the international co community it is favored even uh, uh, by the european union representatives uh, when they, whenever they come to to lead these talks but still there is this hope and this is the why this calmness is being kept is the reason that the both uh, both uh, sides hope that one day by achieving an an agreement between uh, kosovo and serbia the the road will be open to join the European Union and NATO. So this is the this is the 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 uh, in what both par both parties hope, and this is a good thing. But uh, as we see now, um, practically uh, there isn't any, any any result because the European Union hasn't uh, shown to be very interested or hasn't been involved seriously into bringing both parties into an agreement uh, from the fact that the, that the talks are lasting from from 2011 and we have gone all, 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 almost nowhere so it, it it tells you that this is not really a uh, very uh, a serious thing because things are not going the way that uh, they were planned because you see the the, the both parties in in, in these talks uh, albanians and the serbs have two different goals. Uh, uh, Kosovan government wants to, to achieve a very soon agreement with the Serbs because they need uh, they need the agreement, as I said earlier, to enter the European Union and, and NATO so they, uh, they uh, internationally they could be recognized automatically and, this, uh, and the future will be secured. On the other side, the Serbs, the Serbian government has shown that they are not really interested to uh, achieve any any agreement and uh, their goal seems to be that these uh, talks should last forever so this uh, this is this is the two points are going away from each other and uh, somebody hasn't uh, really tried ser seriously to bring to bring uh, together so a uh, few months ago uh, hopes were high because the european union announced that they will be more active into bringing Parts, uh, both parties in in um, in uh, to the table and discuss and reach an agreement. Then the United States also appointed the special envoy, Mr. Escobar. Uh, United Kingdom also appointed uh, 
uh, uh, uh, Marshall Peach. So it is. It, it seems everything okay, but probably they haven't uh, reached an agreement yet in the international community to impose something on Serbs and Albanians. And unless this is goes on and this does not happen, talks she, seem to be meaningless. In uh, many countries, as you said, uh, you know, uh, European Union being a part of European Union is important for the people. As uh, Direk, you have mentioned, you know, people want uh, a passport so they can easily travel and work in different European countries. But at the same time, uh, there are problems in European Union itself. Uh, and sometimes people uh, question uh, the commitment of the EU to get these countries in because they have many problems. For example, in Northern Macedonia, uh, I remember there was uh, 20 years ago, uh, there was civil war, uh, but somehow uh, after 9-11 incidents, this was solved quickly. But still, uh, I assume that uh, there are tensions uh, between uh, different ethnic communities. So uh, what what is the uh, real uh, situ I mean, how the uh, political elite see uh, EU commitment to uh, having more uh, Balkan countries into EU? How, how do you uh, see that? Periodically, in theory, everything seems fine for, for both governments, Serbian and Kosovo governments, and there is this commitment. They have, uh, as far as the paperwork is concerned, everything is okay. But w when it comes to the talks, then you have after the press conferences, after the both parties meet in Brussels, then you have uh, bo both parties declare uh, and accuse each other of uh, uh, that the international community favors more the other part than uh, this part. So uh, Albanians fear, fear that, and rightly so, that uh, international community, uh, European Union in this case, is uh, favoring the, the, the Serbian government and uh, it hasn't really shown any 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 serious measures to the to the uh, Kosovo government. So this is this is why why they complain. But still, there is this sort of a stick and carrot system that both parties that, that, that the European Union still uses it, but not not to a great effect. You know, to bring them to the table. They you know there are there were so many cases that they agreed on something, but then they go back home. The Serbian side never really implements the the agreement that had signed. So this is the fear, and this is. The point that the, the Kosovo government ha has made so many times, and and lately the prime minister even de even declared that uh, said to, to the international media that uh, we should not uh, exclude uh, the situation uh, of war because uh, uh, the Serbs um, are, are really capable of doing it, and the Serbs ha have the might of the uh, army uh, and they have surrounded Kosovo with, with their military units and the international community doesn't really do much about it. So, you know, it, it has never warned Serbia not, not to threaten Kosovo, although, although Serbian government has openly uh, worked on this direction, has, uh, uh, never, uh, has never implemented any, any uh, boycott measures against Russia, so everybody knows that Serbia and the Serbian government is sort of a sort of a, satel a Russian satellite in, in the Balkans, and there is there is this reason why why Albanians and other um, uh, 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 and other other countries in the Balkans should fear that the Serbs could wage a, a, a new war uh, because they can do it, and uh, because they have uh, they have uh, Russia behind. But on the other side, we have. We have the other part that it tells the people that we should not really worry about the war because the war is not going to happen um, as far as NATO led uh, K4 uh, 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 troops are still in Kosovo and they uh, uh, guarantee the security of Kosovo. There are uh, around sort of 3000 international troops there. In this case, we should mention that there are 500 or something, 540 Turkish soldiers still in Kosovo. So they will guarantee uh, that uh, the, the borders of, of Kosovo and the security of Kosovo will not be threatened by the Serbian army. But on the other side, you have still you have to to be skeptic because we had so many situations in the Balkans which were uh, protected by international armies, the international forces, and they still were attacked. Just remember Srebrenica, who was under the the Dutch army protection, and uh, things still happen there. So 
there is both place for fear and there is both pl place for hope that everything will be okay. But tensions are there. Once the tensions you have in the region, uh, you should uh, you should think that uh, uh, something bad will happen. Yeah, Lek, what is your opinion about that? You know, uh, yeah. EU perspective. Actually, um, for me, the EU is really um, um, a key condition for all countries in the Western Balkans uh, for positive change in the institution and economy. But I think it's not sufficient by itself because I think, this is my opinion actually, a mutual strong political will is needed from main domestic players in in, in the Balkan countries and also in the EU. Uh, because maybe you remember uh, uh, the the French, uh, the France uh, fr in, in 2019, uh, France uh, Emmanuel Macron blocked uh, North Macedonia and Albanians uh, UK way actually. At that time, you remember that uh, Macron, uh, Macron said Said that uh, NATO was experiencing brain death, and also he also said that first of all, all uh, first of all, the core of the EU uh, needed structural reform. Then the accession process, accession process needed a rethink. So we understand uh, from this words, I think uh, for for EU agenda, the accession uh, uh, the accession process uh, actually uh, doesn't have a strategic importance right now. Now, this is actually, um, I can uh, evaluate this. Mm -hmm. And also, EU supports right now, yes, maybe regional uh, integration, uh, but uh, more than European integration, because um, we are facing right now a differentiated European project about the Balkan countries rather than deepening integration. What I mean, uh, it means that like no known membership, but proposing uh, some uh, sticks for a free movement of goods, services, people, capital uh, within the Europe, or proposing some beneficial sticks like uh, support some projects such as Open Balkans, sport unions, economic unions. Unions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I think uh, right now uh, EU uh, EU is uh, is trying to find a new and a creative strategy for itself. Yeah, I mean you uh, Daoud brought the uh, issue of Russia. Uh, we know that in 1990s uh, the Balkans, uh, almost all of the Balkans, former Yugoslavia, was uh, I mean it turned to a battlefield uh, between uh, big powers actually. Uh, and we have seen uh, the devastation and destruction uh, in these countries. Uh, people paid the price uh, of this uh, political struggle. Uh, now uh, we have seen, uh, we are witnessing uh, a similar situation in Ukraine. So, uh, as you mentioned, some people believe that Serbia uh, can turn to another Russian base. Meanwhile, Americans are uh, making military buildup in Greece. Uh, they are building new uh, military bases. So, uh, as an uh, as an historian, experienced journalist, uh, when you look at uh, Balkans in 2022, uh, what is your uh, predictions? What is your uh, understanding of the situation in Balkans? We have seen uh, in Bosnia, Bosnian Serbs are looking for independence. Sometimes, as we are discussing, we see. Uh, nationalism rising in Kosovo from both sides. Uh, as, as a historian, how do you uh, analyze uh, our situation right now in the Balkans in general? In a way, now it's it's uh, it's equally dangerous than it was in 1990, uh, or even more dangerous because uh, Russia now is uh, is a bigger player and bigger factor than it, it was in 1990. So Russia now has. Uh, um, uh, even has has told and is is telling us every day that is uh, they are capable of uh, waging war. We see that from Ukraine, and we see that uh, from the Serbian and Russian friendships. So it's, it, Serbia is the only country, as I said earlier, in Europe that hasn't imposed any sanctions, and they openly declare that they are in in uh, in brotherhood with Russia. And there is always this fear that Russia will be behind of any conf conflict which will be initiated by, uh, by, by the Serbs. So 
um, this is this is the fear, and we should not exclude this. Uh, uh, it's 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 always there. If if, if Russia wants to destabilize the uh, Western Balkans, they can do it via Serbia. They had tried. Russians tried it to do in Macedonia. They failed. They tried. Uh, to do it, uh, to destabilize governments uh, everywhere, like in uh, Montenegro, they also failed there, So, but they never fail in Serbia, and they'll, they'll never try in Kosovo and uh, Albania to do any destabili destabilization, because uh, the population, the Albanian popul population uh, traditionally has been anti-Russian, and there is, no, uh, there is no place for the Russians to do something about it. But, uh, you see the the, the fear uh, to to other nations, to Bosnians, Albanians, and perhaps uh, uh, Montenegrins, is that the Serbia can destabilize these these countries at any moment, um, because the international community doesn't really want Serbia about it. So the problem with the international community is always that they react too late. They they never reacted. Uh, uh, against Milosevic on time, they did not react against uh, uh, Putin in time, and now they will not uh, uh, react against, uh, which we see it every day, they are not really doing anything against uh, Vucic, the president of Serbia, which is openly uh, threatening uh, neighboring countries and uh, openly get um, um, Russian arms and Russian political uh, support every day. So it's it's it, it, it's it's something that doesn't really give you hope that uh, um, things are going to change uh, very soon. If if Serbia is left to do uh, whatever they they want, if Serbia is left to um, uh, 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 to, to do uh, or to go forward with their nationalist uh, uh, demands, uh, which are basically same as as they were in 1990s when Milosevic started all the wars in former Yugoslavia. It's, it's the same situation now because Vucic and others who are in government of Serbia hasn't really changed a thing, hasn't changed at all from the Milosevic uh, philosophy of power. So it's uh, it's uh, still depending, uh, uh, depends on international community and Serbia, how they uh, see the situation and, and if they if they have success of of uh, uh, making Serbia to accept any any agreement or making Serbia to uh, to uh, go back on these uh, on these uh, difficult uh, and dangerous issues. So at the moment, it's uh, the, the the biggest problem. It, it, it will be it will be shown in the Kosovo and the Serbian border. So this is the place where, where, where both sides may may clash, and this is what everybody thinks that. It is it is really it is really dangerous and, uh, and the world should avoid this. But the fear is that is still that the Serbs are not really being told to stop with their uh, aggressive policies. Dilek, uh, yesterday uh, this week, uh, Slovenian president uh, was in Turkey. Uh, he met with Turkish President Erdogan, and uh, during uh, his meeting, his uh, in their press conference, he said if the Ukrainian war prolongs, it may have uh, a negative impact in the Balkans. So the tension may uh, reach to uh, Balkans. Uh, do you uh, agree with that? Do you also see uh, this uh, risk in the region the, when you uh, also, uh, after we listen, doubt, uh, Mr. Daoud? I see. Actually, uh, uh, from my point of view, uh, the Balkan countries have not escaped the effect of uh, any war in the, in the world, in the earth, since almost all wars are treated as balkanization, let's say. Uh, yes, I agree that because of the war in Ukraine, I think uh, everyone is on high alert especially about Kosovo and that's the reason global audiences paid a lot of attention to this border tension but uh, yeah Russia helped uh, really nationalist parties in the region and uh, really want to undermine the NATO uh, NATO and European mem European integration process of the Balkan countries but I don't think so there will be war in Kosovo yes maybe yeah po uh, every time there's possi possibility but um, uh, 
the, if I consider the NATO, also Mr. Dowd said that NATO troops in Kosovo and also U.S. involvement in also Kosovo and also European Union uh, integration process in Kosovo, so the risk of the war, uh, I think, uh, um, uh, really low. Yeah, uh, let's uh, talk a little bit positive things if you <laughs> would like to uh, speak. Uh, you know, uh, I also, as journalist, been to Kosovo during the war, after the war, uh, when there was crisis in Mitrovica. Uh, as also, we uh, followed what happened in Bosnia in uh, early 1990s. Uh, I remember the Dayton Peace uh, talks, uh, which ended with agreement uh, under Richard Holbrook's, uh, let's say, monitoring. Uh, so we, we know uh, the sources of the problems. Uh, there was a bloody war which was contained and ended with a ceasefire without any peace, uh, actually uh, a good peace agreement in Bosnia. We know the situation in Kosovo, Serbs are not happy. Uh, many uh, foreign uh, other countries, I mean European and also uh, other countries, the US, Russia, everybody has uh, stakes on uh, what's happening in Balkans. Uh, and European Union provided a vision to uh, include uh, most of the Balkan countries. So uh, having all these problems, ethnic problems, economic problems, you know, uh, political uh, problems, uh, do we, uh, can we uh, talk a little bit about uh, positive things? Do you, do you think there are, uh, there is a ground for uh, improvement on a positive way uh, under these circumstances? Uh, yes, thanks. Uh, it's, yes, of course, we have we have always uh, to be optimistic and there is much space uh, for optimism in, in the Balkans. Uh, but still, I, I have to emphasize once again that it, it all depends how much Serbia wants to cooperate in, 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 in any proposal because the Serbia uh, willing or not is the biggest factor in in in, in the Balkans, and they they are econo economically and uh, militarily the strongest one, um, and they have the human resources and so on. But so far, the government uh, has p pursued the same nationalistic uh, policy against against the uh, the neighbors, and uh, uh, the neighbors don't really feel very very safe uh, with, with the uh, Serbian government pursuing the, this this policy. But um, it all depends how the Serbian Kosovan uh, um, problem ends, and it is being delayed and postponed and delayed for forever. So uh, further, further they delay, so the chances, you know, to get worse are bigger. Uh, this is why we we, we should hope that. Uh, um, that very soon the European Union and the United States and the United Kingdom, both with their uh, uh, envoys, will force uh, both parties and uh, to an agreement. So there are there have been so many initiatives in the Balkans for closer co economic co and political cooperation. One is uh, now being developed. Uh, they, they call it open open Balkan, which is sort of a Serbian, Albanian, uh, or Belgrade, Tirana. Uh, initiative, but uh, you see, uh, Kosovo Kosovo government has denied this uh, this cooperation and has uh, um, and has um, it, it, it is being the, the, the denial is being supported by everyone. It is a popular uh, denial in, in 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 Kosovo and not so much in Albania. So. Kosovo government does not want to join this sort of association because you have Serbia inside there and Serbia still refuses to recognize uh, independence of Kosovo and treats Kosovo as, um, as an internal matter, treats Kosovo as, as a part of Serbia. So there isn't, with this position, there isn't really much uh, hope for an, any international uh, uh, cooperation. So you do not, uh, at the end of the day, Kosovo is a country, independent country, recognized by most of the countries in the world, uh, and uh, it treats itself uh, as an independent and sovereign. And now you cannot really enter an, an, a sort of an association when some country does not recognize the international, uh, the, the international uh, being you as an international partner. So. This is why why these uh, uh, these initiatives will not be uh, functioning unless Serbia 
who we recognize uh, Kosovo, and that is not going to happen before they reach an agreement between Serbia and Kosovo. And when that is done, we don't really know, but sooner they do, it will be better than every sort of agreement or every sort of proposal for international uh, cooperation in the Balkans or any sort of proposal which comes from the European Union will uh, will pass easily and uh, will be implemented. At the moment, as the things stay, as the things are, at the moment, that, that's, it's difficult, you know, to believe that uh, the situation will change much. One and what, uh, yeah, please. And uh, just short comments, sorry for that. And also for me, uh, the the I try to be optimistic, but it's, uh, I think, recently really hard to, to be optimistic because uh, in the case of North Macedonia, let's say, uh, delayed uh, Euro-Atlantic integration has been really costly because uh, people feel that they are cheated by uh, by uh, by European Union because uh, people here or whoever you talk people wants uh, European Union to to keep their words uh, to them because uh, the North Macedonia for example uh, uh, the sign uh, stabiliz the first country who signed stabilization and association agreement uh, with the EU so but now it uh, it uh, it starts Started symbolic uh, accession talks, uh, not uh, not uh, normal ones. So this uh, this cause, I think, um, really democratic backsliding, and also this cause uh, uh, reform fatigue in the country because people all the time asking mm -hmm. that why we need to do this. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, reforms, why we need to do uh, this, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, it's uh, it's it's really hard to be actually uh, um, the, the, uh, the optimistic. Actually, yeah. Let me add something to what uh, Dilek already said. It's the same feeling even in 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 the population in Kosovo. You know where uh, Kosovan citizens are still. Um, need a visa uh, to travel to Europe and uh, there is no visa liberalization going on for years. The European Union has promised it and, uh, and never, uh, 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 never uh, took this problem seriously. So the, the people may think, so what is, what is this sort of game? And they, they don't really uh, allow us to travel and let, let alone of, of doing so. There is this disbelief for the, uh, for the European Union being grown every day in Kosovo because they see they see no result. That's the problem now. Exactly, and also I think the indefinite membership hope is not enough right now for the countries in the Western Balkans. I think they want the real solution, and uh, and uh, I'm following this region almost uh, ten years or let's say nine years. This region uh, was never. Farther away from the from its Europeanization process before. Unfortunately, um, I think we are right now an irreversible period of uh, geopolitical uncertainty and instability. Well, uh, before we close, I want to ask uh, about uh, Turkey's role. You know, in Tur if Turkey, uh, we have a strong uh, Kosovo Albanian community. Uh, and Turkey as Turkish people's natural sympathy goes with uh, Albanians all the time uh, because of historical ties and also uh, what happened during uh, late 1990s when uh, Kosovo Albanian people suffered uh, from uh, the killings and massacres uh, committed by uh, Milosevic's uh, uh, Serbia. Uh, so, uh, but still Tur Turkey is trying to uh, also keep Serbia in uh, line, uh, also uh, have uh, relations uh, with Serbia and trying to bring uh, sides together. Uh, do, you, do you think uh, Turkey can play a role in limiting uh, Serbia's uh, or some part of, as you said, the nationalists' uh, attempts to uh, destabilize the region? Yes, there is. Uh, uh, there is a strong feeling and there is a recognition of, of, of a close relationship of uh, uh, Turkey and, and Kosovo or Turkey and, and Albania and uh, um, people are aware that uh, Turkey has really contributed a lot into uh, developing democracy and um, the process of uh, international recognition of Kosovo 
um, there is always all this this fact that uh, Turkey has has power to 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 uh, influence uh, political and economic processes in 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 the Balkans, not only in Kosovo but in Serbia too. So it's uh, a Turkey in a sort of a position that can uh, bring uh, uh, parties together, uh, Serbian, because there is the Turkish influence in Serbia too. But the problem here is that, uh, unfortunately, Turkey is not uh, as big player as the United States. The, the the United States, among the Albanians and the Serbs and others, is the biggest player. Is is the only the Albanians believe or the only force they believe is the United States because. Uh, the United States got got the will and the power to do whatever, whatever they want. So, um, yes, uh, on, on the side, Turkey can can contribute a lot, but the uh, United States still remain the main player on this. It is it's the only force that could bring parties uh, together and could uh, make them to implement any any sort of agreement. Yeah, Dilek, do you want to add something to that? Uh, m- m- maybe before. Uh, to Turkey's role, uh, I need to uh, uh, say something about it. Um, uh, two days ago, I think at the opening of uh, ambassadors conference, uh, which held in Ankara, Turkey's foreign minister, uh, Mevlüt Çavuşoğlu, confirmed that uh, President Recep Tayyip Erdoğan will visit the Balkan countries in September. Uh, I'm not sure which country he will visit, but I think he's expected to visit Bosnia and Serbia and maybe as well as the other uh, other countries in the region. But this is really good news. And uh, I also agree with Dauti. Yes, maybe due to the Arab Spring, the Turkey's uh, political activism uh, slowed down in the Balkans for, for a few years. But currently, Turkey began to take active role again in, in regional conflict. And also, it has really good potential in the Balkans because because of its uh, its uh, its historical, social, uh, cultural ties. Let's say, and Turkey shows that if necessary, I can be a problem solver uh, or an actor that relieves the problem. Yeah, yeah. With this, uh, let's uh, finish our talk. Thank you very much, uh, Daud Doğuti, uh, journalist and historian. It was a pleasure to have you. Thank you, sir. And uh, Dilek Kütük, uh, thank you to you too, uh, and hope to see you next time. With this, we came to the end of Turkey Talks, and uh, see, hope to see you next week, and have a nice time. You too, thank you.